Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with Millennial Mike. And we are going to react to a Manny Koshman video that he just put out yesterday that I thought was very well done. Uh, kind of seven things that Manny learned and lost a lot of money on. So, Mike, thank you very much for watching it and cutting this together because I think Manny is really trying to help people. Yeah, yeah. And so just so folks know, you know, we do our weekly Q&A session where people leave comments and things like that. People also love to send us videos. Now, this one, Mike sent me himself, but uh, a lot of the time people send me videos or him videos, and then we can do reactions to it. We've done Dave Ramsey, Valuetainment. So just make sure if you see something you like out there on the internet, send it our way. So we're going to do this one. Like you said, it's Manny Koshbin's top seven money mistakes. Are you ready? You need to look out for these seven money mistakes I personally made early in my life. Number one, don't mix business with pleasure. So how can you apply this to your life? If you buy a watch, a car, camera, anything for purpose of reselling it as an investment, don't use it. Just focus and be disciplined. Number two, not enough due diligence. Any endeavor you take in life, make sure you take your time, do your due diligence, before you put your money at risk. Number three, living above your means. I spent a lot of money on cars and things that was not producing me cash flow. So for those of you guys that are just starting out and have a little bit of money or making good money, make sure you spend your money investing. Number four, growing too fast. Don't get too cocky like me. Take your time, do your due diligence, and spend time investigating your next move if you're opening or expanding your business. Now, segueing from number four, number five, have enough reserves for a rainy day. Oh, please don't be like me. Make sure you have that reserve for a rainy day because guess what? That rain will come for everyone. And number six, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, my last number seven and most impactful is loaning money to friends and losing great friends. 95% of the time, the person, my good friend that borrowed the money, couldn't repay me and kept promising me every single time. And then eventually they stopped calling me because they didn't have the money. So I ended up losing that good friend. Even though I forgive them and I consider the gift, it's just the relationship tarnished and it's never the same. So don't loan money to friends unless you're willing to gift. All right, Mike. So he gave us seven things. Some of them seemed a little similar to your O-Rat rules you got behind you back there. So, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you can certainly see similarities. And again, I loved how he told the stories. Each of them you could see really meant something to him when you watched the full video. Uh, mm. So shout out Manny uh, for what he does. And who doesn't like looking at really expensive cars behind <laughs> Manny? <I don't> <laughs> And the white showroom floor, that's that's yeah. got to take a minute to keep clean. So so yeah. good on him. Yeah, so I figured we'd go through these things one at a time and just get your reaction to them. So I have them written down over here. Uh, so the first thing that he said was not to mix business with pleasure. Yeah, I, I think you've got to be very clear. And for me, um, it's really about like, for example, when you're getting on, on your real estate game, it's not taking your cash flow and buying toys, right? I, for me, it's all about build, building that initial momentum or inertia, right? I always talk about the first three to four or five years being slow, right? Once you get that boulder moving, if you step in front of it and you buy some new whip, uh, you know, because, hey, I got 300 bucks in cash flow, I can afford this payment. You're just slowing yourself down. So yeah, if you're on this journey to a better financial future, be on the journey. Uh, don't take a right turn at year five. I've seen plenty of people do it. They're like right near the end and they go buy, you know, a second home or upgrade or something. And I, I go back and tell you, right, Olivia and I are in a good spot today because we never upgraded our home. We never upgraded our cars until we could pay cash and uh, it works, but it is slow. So uh, I agree with that. Number two, uh, make sure that you do your due diligence. Yeah. When you're, when you're in this game, you know, and you, and you get a couple of transactions under your belt. It's, it's pretty much just like my experience in the stock market, right? I was doing all the work, doing all these things and winning. Then winning makes you feel better than maybe you are. And you start cutting corners. And if you start cutting corners and don't do your inspections or you trust, but don't verify, you can lose a lot of money uh, in this game. 
And um, yeah, you, you you don't uh, do the work. Always do the work. Do the complete work for sure. Yeah, I think really the due diligence comes down to me when I apply it to real estate. It's people who are trying to do the fix and flip or the burst strategy. It's very easy to read a couple of books, watch some videos and be like, yeah, you just buy it. Buy a house, fix it up, sell it for more than you bought it for. It's much, much more complex than that. And there's so many shifting variables with interest rates and home appraisals and things like that. I mean, if you don't really do the due diligence, you will get hung out to dry. Amen. Number three, he said, living above your means, or what we would probably say is you need to live beneath your means. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's paramount. I mean, if you're on this road, on this journey, I keep telling you, I always use personal experience, right? We went from spending 100% of our money, our income to, to spending 50% over multiple years. Needs versus wants, get your money right, all of those things. We would not be where we are today without living below our means for, I think it was about 12 years. Uh, and frankly, we still do it today. Uh, just the means are a little bit higher. Right, right. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. Um, number four. Now, this is actually a really interesting one. I think that a lot of people don't think about, especially with real estate. Manny told the story about growing too fast in the video, which for those of you out there, I will post a link to his video down in the comments when Mike gets this video up. Um, he talked about how he had a franchise doing business and he opened up another franchise. Then he ended up taking all of his profit from the first one just to try to float the second one because it was a bad area to open it. So, Mike, if you could relate growing too fast to real estate, I think it's uh, one of those problems people don't talk about enough. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that got the last two years was the best years to make money in real estate. And again, I think, unfortunately, what happens in that environment is you start feeling yourself. And hey, if I, you know, I did one flip and made a bunch of money, let's do two. And two work, let's do three. And you know, you you start doing that, and you run into you know seven percent interest rates in the span of four months, and your hard money. I mean, this is what got Dave Ramsey. Let's be very very clear. Dave Ramsey back in the eighties was a millionaire flipping homes. There are people watching this that are the next Dave Ramsey. What I mean by that is it was working. You were doing great stuff, and then your debt structure ate you alive and forces you to declare bankruptcy. Too much, too fast, robbing pay Paul to pay Peter. Uh, and when the debt structure avalanche comes, watch out. So, mm -hmm. we, yeah, it's grow with purpose. Don't Don't be in a hurry. Right. And then along with if you're going to grow, you probably need to do it safely. His point number five was not having an emergency fund. Oh, that's a big one. I put that in my first book, I think. I've seen a lot of people say I have an emergency fund. And then I asked them this very simple question, like, Mike, you got an emergency fund. Yeah, it's 20 grand. Great. Now you just stumbled across the deal of the decade. You got no other money and all it takes is 18 grand. Are you using that emergency fund? No. If your answer is yes, <laughs> it's not an emergency fund. <laughs> right. Right. It's an extra savings account. <laughs> yeah, it's an extra savings account. It's a pile on the side that you use last. If it's an emergency account, it's an emergency account. I have uh, several bank accounts with uh, with emergency funds that I don't look at. I don't consider in my P PFS. I don't have link to anything else. It's like, oh, shit, rainy day. Well, I got some money over there. I got some money over there. Uh, that's an emergency fund. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, number six. Now, this is an interesting one because he says you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. However, Mike... Aren't we kind of a little all eggs in one basket when it comes to real estate? Yeah, for sure. But again, there's there's kind of versions of this. And I think Dion talks about it best, right? Dion uh, reached financial freedom with 15 or 16 units in one market, or I guess he would call it two markets. But what he, done, what he has done beautifully is he has diversified his tenant base because the beauty of a landlord is you don't want to, you don't want all your tenants to be employed by one big employer, right? I, I spoke with somebody who got burned in Florida in the last crash. All of his, I think he had like 100 homes, if I remember the story right, maybe it was 120, but they were all construction workers. Well, guess what happened when the real estate market tanked in Florida and, and construction workers weren't working? All the tenants stopped paying at the same time mm -hmm. and ultimately the debt structure ate them alive. Um, so what Dion did is he goes, hey, I got a third military, third section eight and a third cash right you can you can diversify inside your thing so uh, i think that's beautiful uh for me 
we've got single family homes, small multis, large apartments, and some commercial, but again, all in one area. It's a big area, right? A million people. So I I am diversified inside my bucket. Um, I've also diversified the debt structures down to all fixed. So I think there's things you can do to protect yourself. Um, but certainly, let me say this, when you're starting, focus, 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 right? Charlie Munger says diversification is is a you know path to being average. Just focus on your one area. Your, I call it a buy box in daily discipline, but I don't care if it's stocks or crypto or NFTs. Just get good at your one thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that you can diversify within the asset class of real estate. There's a lot of different opportunities for you out there. Um, his very last thing, uh, and this is something I learned uh, the hard way when I was much younger, which is don't loan money to friends or family. You have to be willing to gift money to friends or family. Now, unfortunately, I've been through that as well. Um, friends and family have asked for money over time, and they've always made these great promises. I've actually never asked for the promises, but they always come in and say, hey, I'll give it back this, that, the other. And um, yeah, to Manny's point, I've never seen a penny of any of that money. Um, I was always, one, after it happened the first time, I was, it was, you know, Olivia says, did you give it? I said, yep. She goes, is it a gift? I said, probably. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's not a fun feeling. And yeah, there's, there's relationships to Manny's point. I don't have today because of a couple of thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, I guess telling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those were his top seven things. Mike, was there anything that he, he missed or forgot anything you want to add before we wrap it up? No, I just want to shout out Manny. I think he's doing a great job of highlighting uh, that the economy is changing. Take advantage of it. I think there's a lot of people preaching fear and be scared. I think Manny's has done a great job. I, uh, I'm taking two days off now, so I'm actually watching content from other creators now. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I have some free time. And I've been watching some Manny stuff lately, and he really is highlighting that there's great opportunities coming. So uh, I think he's doing a lot of work, very much commercial and, and the like. But um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I give him a thumbs up. Yeah, I've seen a few of his videos here and there, and he does seem to be one of those who, on the surface, he may appear as if he's a fake guru standing in front of Lambos and stuff. But when you actually watch what he says and pay attention, it doesn't seem like he's a fake guru to me. He seems like a pretty legitimate business guy who just has a way nicer cars than me. <laughs> yeah, that's his thing, right? Everybody's got a thing, and his thing is cars, clearly. All right, Mike. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on. We do have another video we're going to record about George Gammon and the housing price collapse of 50%. Three reasons why. We'll get into that next.